Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us worship God. I think I'm going to have to get used to everyone to recognizing faces again. I think I've been recognizing masks. And by the way, we did send to the Star Beacon some changes, including mask optional, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, and they didn't change anything, so it still says mask required. Sorry about that. Uh, I've heard a couple of, of uh, minor horror stories in the last hour about the Star Beacon, so I guess I shouldn't be that surprised, but that's what I can tell you. Another change that did, you might not have heard about, I don't know what this, <laughs> uh, the concert in the park, uh, the, the mu music has changed. It was supposed to be Dennis Ford. It will be now some, uh, some group called Thundercraft. I don't think they're probably the same kind of music. I uh, have no idea what it might be, but that's, that's we're still going to sell pies, however. Yeah, and, and Dennis, uh, Dennis uh, Becky tells me that Dennis is going to be here now on June 22nd. So, just have to wait. You know, after all these years of, of, of doing this, you would think this would be easier for me by now. But every, every week seems to be a new adventure. Uh, so anyway, I did some announcements real quick. Let me flip to those. So I got all these pieces of paper stuffed into things so that I don't lose track of where I am. Uh, the COVID changes like we had here last week are, are printed again. Uh, we'll keep doing that. Uh, the announcements about, you know, I'm, I, right now, like I said, I'm coming up Tuesdays and Fridays. I want to add a day. I'm going to check. Uh, uh, I, I know UH Hospital in Conneaut you can get into, but you have to basically make an appointment because only one person can be there at a time. Right, Charlene? And, uh, which is kind of disappointing, but that's the way it is. They're going to be in there. They've got, got to have stricter standards, and I understand that. Uh, but I'm going to check with the other hospitals in the area, and, and as I said, uh, I think I wrote down someplace once, or maybe it was just all in my mind. Like I say, I'm starting to have, have issues sometimes. Uh, if people, if, you, if someone would, you know, my, my habit for all these years has been to pick up the phone, call people, and say, can I come and visit? And I'm not going to do that now. I'd be glad to come and visit, but you have to call me. Because uh, I've, ha I've had my shots, and, and I'm not sure about, about some of you have told me you have, and, and that's wonderful. I'm glad, glad you got that. But I'm not going to be the one to, to I feel like an, I'm imposing on you right now. If we, if we, had, if we were past, if this had never happened, it wouldn't be an issue. But right now, it's, if you would like me to visit, call me and I'll be glad to set it up with you and I'll come over and visit you. And as that happens, like I say, I'll add, I'll, I'll, I'm not coming up every day just because there's not something for me that I need to be here for every day. So as, that, as things kind of open up and we get busier uh, with things, I will be here more often. But right now it's still uh, Tuesdays and Fridays unless there's a meeting or something going on and then it's another day. But that's... That's weekly kind of weekly kind of thing. Anyway, we're still collecting the offering in the back. We will bring the offering forward for dedication, uh, like we used to, like we used to do. Uh, they taught us at seminary how to ignore those kinds of things, or they tried to teach us about how to do that. Uh, sometimes it's just be quiet and wait for it to go away. There we go. Um, rummage sale, we're still collecting donations, uh, uh, the knitting group is meeting, there's new, I don't know if the latest daily bread has been put out yet, but we've got one, I don't think it starts till July, so it's probably not out yet. Uh, again, I just want to remind people with keys and security codes to remember to leave, uh, uh, lock, it, lock up and set the code before you walk out the door. Try to. I told you last week, one day I was almost over I-90 when I suddenly thought to myself, did I lock that door or set the code? And so I turned around and came back, and I'm sure a lot of you have had that experience as well. But uh, uh, So I try to make a mental image, 
may not last more than about 10 minutes, but I make a mental image to, I, I did it this time. And that gets me through the day. Um, one addition to our prayer concerns, the, well, we want to add the Brown family, which is going to Georgia this week for a wedding. Uh, and so we want to keep them in our prayers as they travel down and down and back. Are there any other announcements or concerns this morning? Don't see any hands. Is this working, by the way? I know Pat kind of backed it off a little bit. Everybody can hear it? Okay. Because it's that must be just perfect then, because I can't hear it now. Everybody, let's say on this side this week, there's more of you over here. Everybody here, turn to the other side and wave to them and say, the peace of the, of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And everybody over here say, and also with you. Also with you. And now you say, the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And you say, and also with you. Also with you. Thank you very much. Now let us begin with our responsive call to worship. Let us call upon the Lord to fulfill his purpose. The Lord is the and love that never fails. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, let us pray. Most wonderful God, we come before you not because we are good people, but because your name is love. Not because we have all the answers to life, but because you are abundant life. Not because we have a lot to offer you, but because you offer us amazing grace. Be with each person in this church. Brush our souls with your gentle but dynamic spirit. Infiltrate our thoughts with the truth which shuns all darkness and uncap those deep springs from which true love overflows into worship. Through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray, amen. Our opening hymn is Immortal Invisible God Only Wise. Donuts this today. 
Isaiah the prophet declared, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let us put a pause in the midst of our errant thoughts and unruly emotions and make space for the God who comes to forgive and to uplift. Let us confess our sins to God. Let us pray responsibly together. O oh God, you search us out and know us, and all that we are is open to you. We confess that we have sinned. In your mercy, Lord, forgive us and heal us. When we use our power to dominate and our weaknesses to manipulate, in your mercy, Lord, forgive us and heal us. When we evade responsibility and fail to confront evil, in your mercy, Lord, when we are seduced by fashionable dreams and pursue our desires at the expense of others, in your mercy, Lord, forgive us and heal us. When we despair of changing the world and neglect to change even ourselves, in your mercy, Lord, forgive us and heal us. When we fail to integrate spirit and flesh, and forfeit our wholeness and dignity. In your mercy, Lord, forgive us and heal us. We, we turn, turn to you, O God of infinite mercy. We renounce evil. We claim your love. We choose to be made whole. Amen. St. Paul wrote, Faith was reckoned as righteousness to us who believe in the one who has raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Friends, believe in the good news. In Jesus Christ, you and I are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you. 
him a crowd gathered, so that he and his disciples were not able to eat. When his family heard about this, they went to take charge of him, for they said, He is out of his mind. And the teachers of the law who came down from Jerusalem said, He is possessed by the evil. By the prince of demons, he is driven out demons. So Jesus called them over to him and began to speak to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan opposes himself and is divided, he cannot stand. He, his end has come. In fact, no one can enter a strong man's house without first tying him up. Then he can blunder the strength of the strong man's house. Truly, I tell you, people can be forgiven of all their sins and even slander their utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. They are guilty of an eternal sin. He, he said this because they were saying, He has an impure spirit. Then Jesus' mother and brother arrived. Standing outside, they sent someone in to call him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they told him, Your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. Who are my mother and brothers, he asked. Then he looked at those seated in a circle around him. He said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. This is God's word. Thanks. 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 Let us bow our heads in prayer. O oh God, you have assured the human family of eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Deliver us from the death of sin and raise us to new life in him, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Fake it till you make it is a saying I heard once, probably more than once. The premise, of course, is that none of us are on the inside what we want people to see, see us on the outside. We put on a show desperately hoping that we will not be found out. The opposite of that saying is what you see is what you get. But none of us go through life when we finally get to be adults. I'm hoping any day now. Going back and forth between these two until we find that maturity, and I'd like to think it's a spiritual maturity that lets us, lets us get past all our posing. Our gospel reading today is about Jesus confrontation with authorities, and with his family even. To examine it, uh, to understand that, we have to, we have to kind of be willing to reveal ourselves as well. At least to ourselves, at least, at least inwardly, we have to reveal ourselves so that we can say, this is who I am and this is who I would like to be. We are back in the Gospel according to St. Mark after spending the Easter season in John and we find ourselves in Jesus' very early days, only the third chapter in John, or in, in Mark. His ministry is just getting started. He has been preaching and teaching, healing and exercising demons from the many who have been coming out to see him. And it really doesn't matter which Gospel you read, Jesus always draws crowds. He's also been challenged in these times over and over by temple leaders, by Pharisees, seeking to catch him out, seeking to expose him as a fraud, or as in today's story, as an agent of Satan. 
We also have Jesus' family involved, a mother and brothers who are concerned that he may be unbalanced mentally. In some sense, there is, there is something easy about identifying with families, uh, with, the fam with the Jesus family and with the scribes, actually. It's like, it's like identifying with family and church leaders. You expect a certain solidity, a certain earnestness, a certain caring in those, uh, among those people. Someone once referred to them as the family values crowd. Defending traditional family structures, usually with biblical proofs. And the powers that we see today in the lesson, as well as the powers that we see in, in our lives, family, church, are not evil. But I have to say that sometimes what what we do is just this morning I, I, I caught a an article came across my news feed today uh, about the the Southern Baptist Convention which for years has been well all, all denominations have been struggling over the issues of, of uh, claims of abuse by, by women against against clergy it's, a, it's something that <laughs> While we've taken more time to talk about it, it's something that goes back a long, long, long ways, folks. Let's be honest about that. But this was about the Southern Baptist Convention, and it was one of their highest uh, officials in their in their uh, power structure uh, who talked who talked about who has talked about the fact that these power structures have gone about for years negating claims of abuse by women against clergy, which is, as I said, something that happens all the time. What was interesting is that he talked, they said they would talk about these women as Potiphar's wife. Now you have to know the story of Joseph, back in the Old Testament, to know that Potiphar's wife was, was attracted to, to Joseph. He was a young, handsome kid. And he, she kept coming after him, and he kept resisting her. And finally, he runs away one day, but he loses his cloak or whatever he was wearing in the process. And she holds that up to her husband and says, look, he tried to rape me. <coughs> Several other things have been happening in the news that have taken me back and I have to confess to you, I've not read it. But several years ago, I bought a book by, a, by a, a historian named Howard Zinn. He wrote a book called The People's History of the United States. And it's not a traditional history like I studied, you know, like probably you studied in school about all the great things we have done. It's a different kind of history. He starts with Columbus, and he starts not by uh, the claims of the great things that Columbus did in, in finding, discovering this new world, but by the fact when he landed first on Haiti, he expected that there was huge amounts of gold someplace. And when he didn't find it, after searching for a while, when he couldn't find it, he said he had to, they, they said he had to have something to take back to Spain with him. So he just rounded up as many Indians as he could and picked the best of them, the, the ones he thought were the, the strongest, 500 of the strongest, loaded them in the boat and took them home, took them back to Spain. 200 of them died on the trip. And Howard Zinn's book looks at history from a different way, from those from those places where we're not so happy to look at. We've recently seen groups and individuals wrestling with our nation's past sin of slavery. A few months ago they were talking about uh, things at John, Johns Hopkins University. Suddenly discovering that Johns Hopkins, a uh, famous man in the Maryland area, uh, had, had been keeping slaves. 
and that had never been discovered or disclosed before. <coughs> and they're grappling with the idea that this great benefactor to the area, to the establishment of this great university, was someone who held slaves. Religious organizations and institutions are establishing reparation funds for people whose ancestors worked for these organizations and in institutions as slaves. And this is what got me kind of messed up last night. I have mentioned this to a few people 12 to 15 years ago somewhere in there. My father told me a story about my family, my, my father's family. He told me that his grandfather, who would might be my great-grandfather, had as a teenager joined the Confederate Army and fought in the Civil War on the side of the Confederacy. And then another time he told me this, sto this story about the time he said he was in a bar, uh, I think he said a beer joint, uh, and a black man came in and was telling everyone that he and my dad were brothers. And then I learned that my family back then had a slave or two. And that's where I got distracted last night. I suddenly had this urge to find out something about that. So I went back, went to my computer, sat down and asked to find uh, Platte County, Missouri, in 18, an 1860 census of Platte County, Missouri. And I actually came up with what's called a slave consensus, a slave census. Now I looked through 1860 and 1870, maybe 18, I don't remember, 1850 and 1860, and I couldn't find my family's name, so I'm doing something wrong. Uh, but I was very interested in looking at that census, because they would record the name of the owner, and then they would put, if you had more than one slave, they would record each one individually. They'd put how many, one, and their age, 32, sex, male. They put another one, 15, female. There was no place in that list for names. There was no place in that list for someone's name. And I used to think that was kind of an amusing story about my father and this black man in the in the, uh, in the bar, in the beer joint. But I'm not so certain that that's a funny story anymore. Jesus is not here to support the powers that be. Jesus is not here to support those, those institutions and groups that deny people's rights, that does not deny them their, what we would say, God-granted rights as human beings. In the stories, in the stories of Jesus, we always see these people crowding around Jesus. Those people are poor. Those people are sick. Those people have nothing, most of them. The people that we do not see there are the people who are running everything. In some sense, in some sense, that's bad news. I've been preaching in Presbyterian churches now for almost 40 years. And and I'm thinking that I've got to relearn some things and got to got to learn to do some things differently. Like that first century, we live in somewhat troubled times, I think we can all admit. We're just getting out of, of COVID-19. Again, nice to see all your faces. But we're trying our best to figure out how to be faithful. How to follow that way that Jesus is leading us. The Holy Spirit 
that we talked about at Pentecost is something that we can't control. The Holy Spirit is here working and sometimes doing some pretty amazing things that we probably don't agree with. The theme in this story, in some sense, is healing. Jesus is healing people. Everybody else is just getting in the way. The temple people, the Pharisees, his family, his own family, they're just all getting in the way. Jesus is healing people. And maybe that's how we need to start thinking of what we're doing. Perhaps we need to look for things that are hurting us, that are wounding us, that don't show up as, as a hole in our body that's bleeding. Perhaps if we started to see people like that, we would find ourselves closer to Jesus. and following in his paths towards his kingdom. Amen. Now I'd ask you to please stand and join me in reciting and in, in our, uh, be part of our statement of faith, our affirmation of faith. Join me in reciting the Apostles' Creed. <clears throat> I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Let us bow our heads in prayer. O oh God, you are so mighty and yet so merciful, to whom the angels and archangels continually cry, Holy, holy, holy. Lord, you know the thoughts of our innermost hearts better than we know them ourselves. Be among us. Lord, meet us here in this time of worship. Give us that assurance of your presence promised to those who gather in your name. As we join in this time of silence and prayer with our friends and neighbors in the fellowship of your church, help us to know that fellowship is vertical as well as horizontal that the deep yearnings of our hearts, that our hopes and dreams are heard by you even before we utter them. We thank you for all things given to us as your children, for the ordinary necessities of life, which preserve our bodies, but more for the unseen treasures of the spirit, for faith and hope and love, and for the gospel of your Son, Jesus Christ, by which we live and which we seek to live by. Set our hearts even more firmly in pursuit of the true pearls of your kingdom, that the trash of this world may not divert our lives from you. Lord, we remember in your presence all those in our fellowship who are lonely and anxious, 
those places where there is illness and suffering. Lord, we pray this day for those people that we know in special need, for Kathy and Alan, for Carl and Kim, AJ and John, for Jim and Mary Jean, Mary Jane, for Chris and Evan, for Sarah, for Donna and Bill, the Brown family and the Smith family, for Sarah and Betty, for Joyce and Len and Charlene. We remember all of them, Lord, and, and pray for those whose names are not mentioned but whose lives are stressed and challenged. We pray for each other gathered here today, Lord. Some have come here with troubles to face. Lord, lead them like a shepherd out of the times of troubles. Some here come living in the grip of temptations. Free them from the chains of wrong desire. All of us come here, Lord, with sins to confess and weak lives to be strengthened. We pray that you will forgive us and give us such faith in you that together we may sing songs of victory. One of the things that we're not doing yet in these normal times is we're not passing the offering plate just like we won't be passing the communion plates. By the way, did everybody get uh, a cup when they came in a Jew, a, a, for communion? Okay. Very good. Uh, St. Paul wrote to the Corinthians, they who sow sparingly will reap sparingly, they who sow bountifully will also reap bountifully. That reminds me, we just started our garden yesterday. We'll bring the extra. <laughs> the bounty. So thank you for your gifts, for your generosity. Thank you for the ways in which you uh, support this church not just through your giving, but through your presence and through your prayers, through your active association with this, with this body. We do appreciate it very much. Now let us join together. Please stand and join, in, join with me in singing the doxology.
Come to this table not because you must, but because you may. Not because you are strong, but because you are weak. Come not because any goodness of your own gives you a right to come, but because you need mercy and help. Come because you love the Lord a little and would like to love him more. Come because he loved you and gave himself for you. Come and meet the risen Christ, for we are his body. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Listen to the words of the institution of the Holy Supper as they are given to us by the Apostle Paul. I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night in which he was betrayed took bread, and after he had given thanks he broke it and said, Take and eat, this is my body broken for you. And then he took the cup after supper and gave it to them and said, This cup is, is, my, is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. As Jesus offered prayers to God, let us draw near and offer our prayers of thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Gracious God, we praise your holy name giving thanks to you with our lips and our lives for the power and mystery of your word for which you created us and call us to yourself, we give you thanks. For the power and mystery of your word by which you took flesh and lived among us through your son Jesus Christ, we give you thanks. For the power and mystery of your word by which you chose common people forming the church to be the body of Christ in the world, we give you thanks. We offer you our prayers and thanks for Jesus Christ who took flesh and lived among us, was baptized for our sins, taught us your way of truth, who loved us in a love, with a lovelessness and died that we may have life. God of grace and power, you invite us to share in mysteries that are beyond our understanding. In simple trust, we seek the transforming power of your spirit on this assembly of your people, on these words and actions, on this bread and this cup, in order that, by the miracle of your grace, we may be united to Christ and to one another, one in body, one in spirit, one in faith. This sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving we offer to you, gracious God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who lives in unity with you and the Holy Spirit, one God to all eternity. And now, as our Lord taught us, we pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to be temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Has everyone got themselves selves prepared? On the night when Jesus was betrayed, he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You may now eat your bread. In the same way he took a cup and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. You may now drink your cooked juice. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And 
also with you. Let us pray together. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Now let us close with the final verse of Let Us Break Bread Together. You go nowhere by accident. Wherever you go, God is sending you. Wherever you are, God has put you there. He has a purpose in your being there. Christ who indwells you has something he wants to do through you, wherever you are. In the name of the living God, may you have grace, God's grace, according to your needs. May you have God's joy that money cannot buy. And may you have God's peace that the world cannot give. The blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Join us downstairs, please.